In this video, we're going to spend some time connecting the t-test and linear regression. Um, so we're going to look at an outcome of the FEV, or the lung capacity, right, forced expiratory volume, and the X variable of smoking recorded as yes or no. Now, in a previous video, we got some of these summaries out of R, so i just recap them here. We calculate the mean of FEV for non-smokers and for smokers. We also did a t-test, comparing the mean for smokers and non-smokers. Here's the difference in means. Here's the t-step. Let me just write down, this is the null hypothesis that the mean for non-smokers minus the mean for smokers is zero. Reverse an alternative, it's not zero. Okay, so doing a two-sided t-test. So there's the test statistic, the p-value, as well as the 95% confidence interval we get um, from R. And then we fit a linear regression model um, using the smoking, co um, smoking variable to try and estimate FEV. And here's the model output, as well as the um, test statistic for testing if the slope, or the, I shouldn't call it a slope because it's not a slope, but the coefficient for the smoking coefficient, if that's zero, as well as a 95% confidence interval for that coefficient. So what I want to do is try and connect these two. And part of the goal for doing this is trying to show you how, in some sense, we can use linear regression to do a t-test, but adjust it for other variables. Um, and we've already touched on the idea, and we're going to build on it more of that. We might need to adjust for confounding here. And using linear regression is one way we can do that. So what I'd like to do is try and build some of that connection here. So first. What I want to do is remind you of this intercept here. Right, so this coefficient, B0. If you remember, the generic interpretation of a coefficient in a regression model is the mean Y, or the mean FEV, when all X are zero. Right, in this case, when all X are zero, what that is, is it's telling us the mean FEV or right, all of the x equals zero means they do not smoke, or the non-smokers. Right, so the mean FEV or lung capacity for the non-smokers. So it's giving us this here. Now, let's think about what this coefficient here is telling us. So this is B1. If you remember, again, the generic interpretation is what's the change in the mean y value associated with this variable? So here, what's the change? Let's write that down. What's the change in the mean FEV? Again, that tells us what's the change in the mean FEV associated with this variable, or the change in the mean FEV for smoking. So for smoking equals yes. All right, again, let's just take a moment to think about that. This 0.71 tells us how does the mean FEV change for someone who smokes relative to the reference, or someone who doesn't. So this here, again, is telling us the change in the mean FEV for someone who smokes, the mean for a smoker, minus the mean for a non-smoker. Okay. It's 0 0.71. Okay. And so again, you can notice if we were to fill in those values, the mean for the smoker is 3.28. Okay. The mean for the non-smoker is 2.57. The difference in those is positive 0.71. Okay. We can also find from this model, if we wanted to get the mean FEV for smokers, okay, we can sub into this model. The mean FEV, given someone smokes, given smoke is yes, is 2.57 plus 0.71 times 1. Right now, if smoking is yes, this indicator is going to take on a value of 1. And that's going to give us the 3.28. Okay. 
Okay, so right now this uh, fitting is a linear regression model looks like overcomplicating the idea. Um, <clears throat> I'll get to why we might want to do this in a moment. But so the first thing I really want to draw attention to is that this coefficient B1 gives us the mean for smokers minus the mean for non-smokers. So, and I want to draw attention to the fact that this coefficient in the model is giving us essentially the piece of information that we want when we do the two sample t-test and comparing the mean of two groups. Now, worth pointing out, here it's positive, here it's negative. The reason for that is just the defaults in R. In R, when you do the two sample t-test, what it's going to do is subtract these and by putting them in the alphanumeric order. Okay. So the non-smokers come before the smokers. If you remember, this was coded as 0 and 1. So the mean for group 0 minus the mean for group 1. Okay. When we fit a regression model, <coughs> the um, first category, right, that's ordered alpha or numerically, becomes part of the reference. So the non-smokers become part of the reference. And this tells us what's the change for smoking group 1 relative to smoking group 0. Okay, so it's just reverse the order of them. Here it's mean for smokers minus non-smokers. Here it's non-smokers minus smokers. Okay, but hopefully you can see okay that it's just changing the order that they're subtracted in. The second thing I want to point out, connection, in the linear regression output, you get a test statistic for this null hypothesis that B1 equals 0. And if you think about it, if B1 equals 0, okay, testing does this coefficient equal 0, is equivalent to saying the mean for smokers minus the mean for non-smokers is 0. Right? Or writing it this way, if the true coefficient is 0, then the true difference in means is zero. Okay, so again, testing if this coefficient is zero is the same as testing is this difference in means zero. And you'll notice the test statistic you get for the two sample t-test and the test statistic you get for testing is this coefficient zero, again, are the same. Same t-stat, same p-value. And one kind of final thing I want to point out, one connection I want to make, okay, so recall that this coefficient here, B1, we can think of as being the difference in the mean smokers and non-smokers. If we look at a confidence interval right, for this one, go so from this plus or minus the T value right, of roughly two, if we want 95% confidence, times the standard error of B1. And let me just <coughs> write it out to build the connection. We said B1 we can think of as being the difference in means. The mean of non-smokers, sorry, it's the other way around. Smokers minus the mean of non-smokers. That's what B1 is telling us. Plus or minus the T value times the standard error of B1, or the standard error of the difference in the means. Okay, so again, the confidence interval for B1 is going to be the same as the confidence interval for the difference in means. And we'll see that here again happening. For 95% confident, the difference in means is between negative 0.9266 and negative 0.4948. And when we look at the confidence interval for B1, it's the same. And only the sign has changed, because if you remember, the order we're subtracting them in has reversed. But the interpretations would be the same. Where we're 95% confident B1 is between these two values, or 95% confident the difference in means is between these two values. Okay, so what I wanted to do was spend a moment showing you that to build that connection. Right, and see that in some ways we can use simple linear regression or 
for now, let's just say we can use linear regression to reproduce exactly what we would for the two sample t test. Um, and I want to now just take a moment to explain why we might want to do that. Okay, it's not to take something that's fairly simple and overcomplicate it. It's that while well, looking at this, we can see this is clearly biased, right? What do we see that the mean for non-smokers is lower than the mean for smokers? Or if we look at it in terms of the regression model, with the coefficient of 0.71, smokers have a higher lung capacity than non-smokers. So kind of the naive interpretation would be that smoking leads to increased lung capacity. Now we know that that's clearly biased, right? Smokers, if anything, should have lower lung capacities than non-smokers. We're going to start to explore the idea of confounding. We have a little bit already, and we're going to, um, in following videos, but the smokers are also older on average. Being older can have bigger bodies. So what we can do is look at fitting a linear regression model. The mean is B0, say plus B1 times smoking. So I'm just writing generically what we had written there. If you recall, this is going to give us the mean for smokers minus the mean for non-smokers. What's the difference in the mean lung capacity for a smoker versus a non-smoker? But what we can do is add in other variables. So if we fit a multiple linear regression model, which we're coming up to, we can now say, What's the difference in means? How does a smoker's lung capacity compare to a non-smoker's? Adjusting or accounting for age. So if we take a smoker and non-smoker of the same age, right, or we control for that variable, how they compare. So we can think of it essentially as allowing us to do the two sample t-test, but adjusting for other variables, okay, or adjusting for other potential confounders. So previously, we built up, uh, in the intro stats course, built up a good understanding of what is the two sample t-test, what are the interpretations of all these parts? What are the concepts they're based on and so on? And now what we're seeing is how we can take multiple linear regression and we can do essentially what's going to be the same as doing the two sample t-test, but adjusting for other variables or accounting for other variables. Uh, this is not the only use for multiple linear regression. We're going to explore lots of different ways to use it. But one way I wanted to show you here was just how, in a sense, we can think of using multiple linear regression to give us the two sample t-test adjusted for other variables. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.